All right, so good night, everyone. So welcome to the third tech annual technical workshop for today. And today we'll be having the intro to web development using Plus. So let's put our head together for our speaker today, Ani. All right, uh, so my name is Ani, and I'm currently a data engineer at Grab. So today we will be starting off with uh, interactive web development with class. So before we begin, right, um, has anyone here used Python before? Okay. All right. Um, does, is there anyone here without uh, like a local IDE to open a VS code or anything? Is anyone here who does not have an IDE? So everyone has? Okay, cool. Is anyone here that does not know what an ID is? Okay, cool. Has anyone used class before? No? Okay, cool. All right. Okay, this will be fun. Um, okay, so we will briefly talk about what the web is and how the web works and what different components of web are. And then we'll talk briefly about what is Slack and why it is Slack. And then we'll start coding. Okay. So, how does the web work? Let's look at web through the analogy of a restaurant. Right? So, let's say a restaurant is a web. So, a restaurant has different components. Right? So, there's customers, there's menu card, there's servers, there's kitchen. So, let's see how all of these relate to a web. So in a restaurant, we have a customer, right? Customer is one who wants sync. Similar to that in web, we have what is called a client. So in our case, a client will be a browser, so like Google Chrome or whatever, right? So a client will send requests to the backend to get things, right? This is the concept that we can understand. And we have what is called an API. So an API is called application programming interface. So this is Similar to a menu card, right? So the client looks at what they want from the menu card in the from the web to an API. And then the waiter is just like the web server. So the web server is what will serve what the client wants, right? And how does the web server know what to serve or where to get things from? From the kitchen, right? So kitchen where the food is cooked, where all the vegetables are stored, all of that stuff. So in the context of a backend, the kitchen is like a database where everything is stored. And the pool is just like the response which is being served. So in terms of a browser, what is being served is a web page, right? You see nice UI and all of that. So that is just like the pool in a restaurant. So here's how the entire picture works. So we send an order to the waiter, right? To the menu card. Then the waiter takes the order to the kitchen, they cook food, everything. And then the waiter brings it back to the client, right? Which is exactly how the web works. So you call the web server, the browser calls the web server to an API. Then the web server talks to the database, gets whatever things it needs, processes it, and sends it back to the browser. Right? Any questions so far? Does anyone have anyone have any doubts? So everyone's here. Everyone knows what web is. Now, what is Flask? Does anyone know what Flask is? Anyone who answers this gets the class of people. Okay, cool. So Flask is a web framework that we code using Python. So there's a few things, right? So web framework Python. So Python is a programming language, and web framework is like kind of like a way that you develop the application, right? So class is called a micro web framework because it does not have any libraries or anything that you have to really use um, specific to class, right? So you can use anything you want with class, which is also what makes class very popular. So in this context, some of the largest tech companies in the world, like Netflix, Google, Facebook, they all use class. Okay, so why class, right? Because it's extremely easy to use. 
Anyone can take a class very easily. I hope. And it's very scalable. So you since so you can build your class code to be very modular and you can scale it up depending on how many requests your server is getting and it handles load uh, extremely easily, right? So with that said, let's code. So um anyone here does not have a local ID. So everyone has a local ID, right? So, yeah, okay. So, so everyone can open up VS Code um, in whatever local directory they want. Um, so, let me so. Right, so I'm just going to create a directory called task. Okay. So mkdir. So I I mkdir class, which literally means make directory class. And now I'm going to see into class, which means I'm now inside the directory, and then I'm going to open the VS Code here. Okay. Can everyone do this? Can everyone do this? Anyone have any difficulties? You can open VS Code anywhere you want, in whatever folder you want. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a file called app.py in, inside this class directory and I'm going to create a folder called templates. Okay, so I created a file called app.py and then I create a folder called templates. Okay, everyone follow so far. Cool. Now, what we need to do is we need to install class now, which is a Python package, right? So to do that, you can open up a terminal you want. Um, I opened a terminal in this case, and I'm going to type pip install class. So that's all I'm going to do. Okay, so currently there's some conflicts with my local app uh, item because of this. So I'm going to go ahead and create a virtual entity to do this. If there is no conflict for you guys, then you can continue to do it in your local uh, using your local Python interpreter. But the way you create a virtual environment is you do Python e dash m v n and then you specify the class like this. Okay, and now I'm going to activate my virtual environment. And yeah, so that's done. And now I'm going to install the class inside my virtual environment. So I did not be able to install class or did not have any difficulties. I don't install class. Yes, no, maybe, no. Did you try installing class? Let's stick in South and the terminal. Are you in South No. Anyone else having difficulties in starting class? Okay. Cool. 
Okay, so now in other five, um, what you're going to do is you're going to say from class import class. And then what you will do is you will create an object called class. Okay, so what this is, what this does is it essentially creates an object of the class class, which, which is essentially the class. Um, which we will just do the validation. And inside this class, I will pass in a name argument, um, which tells it that all the files and everything that it needs to know to run this web application is over here in the current directory. Okay. And now, what we can go ahead and do is do it name equals name. Then app dot run. You can specify any port here. So let's say 8080 for this case. And I will specify debug equals true. Okay, so what this does is it will run our app in port 8080 and it will run it as a debug web application. Okay, so now after doing this, I can go ahead and run this file. So I'll say Python add dot file. And we see this, right? So we see running on 127001 for the ADAT. So 127001 is the IP for the local machine, and ADAT is the port that we specified here. So you can go ahead and specify any other port um, if you want. And it says this is a development server, uh, not using a production environment, which is because the debug equals true. Okay, so now if I go ahead and click on this, then you see that it says not found. Okay? Why why does it say not found even though it says it's running over here? Does anyone know why? Okay. So it's because um essentially what we're doing is we're trying to access this right with a slash. Um but it doesn't access it because we didn't define. We didn't tell the web application what it should do when you access this um, without essentially, right? So if we go ahead and do that, then we won't get this error anymore. So how do we go ahead and do that? We tell the web application that it needs to um, go to a specific route. So in this case, just bash. And then we can define a function such as home or anything you want to call it. And we can return a response. So let's say return hello. So what this essentially means is when we access this URL, this route in our web server, it should return hello. Right. So now if I go ahead and run Python as of agent, and now if I go to this port I see hello. Right. Okay. Everyone following so far? Uh, okay, that's the yes. Um, if, if anyone is not following, please feel free to interrupt me and ask questions. Right. So, another thing that you can do is instead of returning just text, you can also return HTML. So, you can do something like Put this in like H1 or any other HTML tag. And now, if I refresh this page again, we see that it's in an H1 tag. So, another question Has anyone here used HTML before? No, okay, yes. Okay, I see one. Okay. So what H1 tag is, is essentially a header that so it's big and bold, okay? So that's what it should be that. Okay, so before we proceed further, let me just show a quick demo of what we will build today, right? So let me stop this, um, and I will just show a quick demo of what we are going to build.
So this is what we're going to build, right? We're essentially going to build uh, some kind of e-commerce, right? So with a login page. So let's say I just send in. Okay. And oh wow. Okay. All right, so we should see we should be only building something like this with a bunch of. I guess um, objects, and we can uh, add some of them to our cart. Let's say I add three apples or apples to my cart, and I can view my cart, which says code apple. So this is what we'll be building, right? And we can also remove the apples from my cart. So given this application, what we will be doing is we will have a database of some sort to store what objects we have and to store um, what objects we have in our card and also to store user such as the username and password. Okay. So let's see what we can infer from this application. Let's look at the different functionalities and see and just build a mental image of how we should go about building this, right? So we saw that there was a login, which means we need to store a database, which stores email ID, username, and password, so that we can log our user in, right? And then we see that we have different objects to add to cart, which means we need to have some database, which stores the different objects, tells us how many we have in stock, um, gives us a description, um, and maybe has the image of the object that we want, right? And we have a card. So this card, is specific to a user, right? Which means we need to store what object you have in the card, what user is linked to what card, and um, we need a way to link the object to a particular card, right? So we need to store these things. So to do that, we will create three tables one to store the user information, one to store the card information, and one to store the list of objects that we can add to that and then from that. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. So, to do that, I will create a file over here called dataset.file. Okay, and what we're going to do in this dataset.file is we're going to create the tables that we need. And to do that, we will be using SQLite as our database because it's um, a very simple database that we can just use. So to do that, I will do import SQLite key. And then I will do a set of variable called connection or CON and whatever you want to call it. And what we will do is we will connect to some database file. So I want to call my database file database.db. You can call it whatever you want. So this dot essentially means that it's a current directory and database.db is the name of the database file. So what this does is it's going to tell the directory to create a file called database.db in the current directory. Okay. And then what I will do is I will create a cursor object um, I'll call it CUR and I will do CONM dot cursor. So, what this does uh, do is it will help us to execute queries um, to this database. Okay, so now we want to go ahead and create the tables. So, let's create our user table. I'll call it user. So, what information do we need to store in the user table? We need to store username, we need to store the email, and we need to store password, right? So 
we can go ahead and do that. So if so if you execute a query, you will do curl dot execute and you will use strings to write the query in. So to create a table, we start with create a table. Okay, and then we're going to call our table users. So I'm going to say create table users and we put these brackets in and inside the brackets we're going to say what columns to create so every table has a primary key okay so how many keys is that um like just a key for this for the story and just think of it as something unique for each table okay so this time the primary key is usually almost always an id field so we're going to say id and it's going to be an integer. And since it's a primary key, we specify that it is a primary key. And okay. Now, next, we need a field to store. Okay. So I'll say username. And this username is going to be X. So I'll specify the type of X. Then we need to store an email field. So email, which is also going to be text. So I'll just write text. And then we need to store a password field. So I'll say password, which is also going to be a text. All right. So that's all. So this is going to create a table users, which has an ID field, username field, email field, and password field. Cool. So next, we'll create a table called stocks. So this will essentially store the list of objects that we can add to cart, right? So kind of like objects and stocks that we can buy essentially. To do that, we will do something similar. We'll do further execute, create table stocks. So stocks again will have um, ID as the primary field and that primary key. So I'll just go ahead and copy this over here. Now, in addition to that, what do we need for each object? We need the object name. We need the object description to tell us what it will be. So if we look back at this, right, we have a name, we have a description, we have how many of this object we have in stock, right? And we have a image, right? So we need to store these four things in our database. So to go, go ahead and do that, I will just create those fields. So I'll say uh, name, which will be a text. And I'll say description, which will also be text. And we can store a URL of the image. So image URL, which will also be text, right? And we will have to store kind of how many numbers we have in stock. So I'll just say num in stock, right? So this will be a number, uh, which is integer. OK, cool. Next, we will store our cart. So to do that, we will go ahead and create another table. Same way, execute. Create table cart. Similarly, we will have a primary key of the ID. So Copy that part in. Now, what do we need to store in part? Right? So we need to store the user ID so that we know which user the start belongs to. And we need to store a bunch of object IDs so that we know which objects are in this user part. And we need to store how many of this object we have in part. Right? So if we go back, okay, let me add some more objects. So now if we view part, we see it says welcome, so we have the user information 
and we see what objects we are storing in our card and we see how many of these objects we have in our card. Okay, right? so we need to store these three information. Now to get the user information, we can simply get we can simply obtain this from the user ID, right? Because we can we, we know if we have the ID, we can get all of this information from this table. Similarly, if we want to know what object we have in card, we only need the object ID. Because if we have the ID, we can obtain all of this information from this table, right? So we only need to store the user ID, which will be uh, an integer, and we will store um, a stock ID, which will also be an integer. And we need to store how many of this we have in our card. So I'll say num in card, right? Which will be an integer as well. All right. Any questions so far? Does everyone understand why we did what we did? Okay, cool. Now to go ahead and create these tables, what we are going to do is say C O N N dot commit. So when we commit, um, essentially what it will do is it will go ahead and run these statements so that we actually create these tables. Now, once we have done this, I'm going to run this up. So I'm going to say Python data set the time. Oh, by the way, this data set, but I should be in the class folder, not in the template folder. So should be outside this template folder, not inside. So I'm just going to go ahead and run data set of time. And once we run it, you should see this database.db pop up, right? So this is our database, which contains these tables. Now we have these tables. So we can go ahead and populate them. Um, um, so to go ahead and populate it, we are going to again run these uh, same statements. So I will actually go ahead and just delete it um, for now because we're going to run this file again. So let's say populate the So to populate it again, we're going to execute statements. So we do cursor dot execute. And what we're going to do is we're going to insert into the table, right? So you will say insert into. Now, first, let's create a user so that we can log in. So I'm going to say insert into user brackets. Now, inside this bracket, we're going to pass in what columns we want to insert. Okay, so we don't have to pass in the ID column because since it's a primary key, it will auto increment. The ID. So we can just go ahead and enter username, um, email, and password. Okay. And what values are we going to enter into it? So to specify that, we will say values in brackets, and, and we will pass in those values. So do note that. Whatever values you're going to pass in should be in single strings, like in these things are right. So let's say for username, I will say Anil, and for email, I will say Anil at gmail.com. And for password, I will just say password. Okay. So this is essentially going to create a row in the user's database, right? Now, similarly, let us um we let us just populate our stocks table so that we have a bunch of objects uh, that we can just use. So let's see. Uh, so I'm just going to create a list here for stocks. All right, and then I'm going to say 
cursor dot execute many. Okay, so cursor execute many, and you will see why in just a second. So I'm going to say insert into stocks. Similarly, you will specify our column. So we have name, we have description, we have uh, name in stock, and we have niche word. All right. And then I will say values. Now, Inside this values, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, and pass in stocks over here. All right, so what this is essentially going to do is it's going to add, it's going to insert into the stock database um, from this stock list. So you will just populate this list with whatever values we want, and it's going to insert it into the stock database. Okay. So inside this, um, we create a tuple, and inside this tuple, we will put these four values: name, description, number of stock, and image order. Okay. Everyone following so far? Yeah. So, anyone want to just shout out what object you want to add? What object you usually buy from the comic store? Anyone want to just shout out any object? Okay. Okay, then let me know. So let's say we have apples, which is our name. Let's say description of fruit. All right. And number and stock, let's say we have 20 apples. And for image URL, we can just put Google and But, um, okay, you guys can go ahead to Google and pick up any image URL. Um, but since they can't access the internet anymore, I'm just going to copy from there. So this is just the URL to an image. You have to go to Google Images, click on an image, then right click and select copy link to the address. Okay. Um, yeah. Now we have the stocks uh, list, and we populated um, the stock database uh, from this stock list, right? So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to con dot uh, commit and this will go ahead and um, run everything. So I'll create the table and we'll populate these two tables and these two tables in the district. So I'm going to go ahead and run five and just take five. And we see there is uh, dot tb over here. And it will be populated with uh, this user field and uh, this source field. Okay, cool. So now we have our database um, set up. So now what we need to go ahead and do is work on the web application to impact the database and build some UI so that we can see things. Okay. So. Yeah, I'm just going to change this to a little bit more. Let's have the whole kind of issue. Okay. So, if I go ahead and run this now. Yeah. 
you see hello there. So what we want to do is we want to now go ahead and create a login page okay, so that we can log in. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a result of add route and slash login. Okay, so this is what you will use to uh, do the login, the start slash login. And then I will go ahead and create a login function. So um, login. Now, what class does, which is really nice, is you can create an HTML file. And inside this function, you can just return that HTML file. So what I will do is when, whenever you access this login out in the URL, it's just going to display the HTML file. Okay. So what we're going to do now is do this. First, is we're going to import this function from class called render template. And next, what we're going to do is inside this template folder, we are going to go ahead and create a file called login.html. Okay. Now, inside this, I will just um create a simple HTML file. So every HTML document begins with HTML tag, um, which just says that it's an HTML um, language, not language. And then inside the HTML tag, I will create a head tag. Okay. So a head tag is called like a top part of the document, usually the title and header and whatnot. And inside this, I will just put a H1 tag, which is uh, a heading tag, and then I'll say welcome to login. Okay, so that's what I'll do inside the HTML file. And now in an app file, what you will go ahead and do is inside the login function, you will say return render template, and inside this function, pass in the HTML file you created, which is login HTML. Okay. Everyone following so far? Cool. So then I will go ahead and run app.py. And if I open this, you see hello. Um, but now if I were to type slash login in the URL, right? I should see welcome to login, which is what we created in the HTML file. Okay. Does everyone be able to do this? Anyone have any difficulties? Okay, how about the first person to ask a question gets to do? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So continue. Now, uh, inside a login HTML, right, what you want to do is you want to create uh, a form, right, where you can type in your email, password, and you have a submit button, right? So to do that, what you will do is we'll create a body field. And inside this body field, we will create a form. Okay. Now, in this form, uh, I'll just create a paragraph tag. So I'll say enter uh, email. And in the next paragraph, you will have an input. So you create an input field. 
and then you say type equals text and then equals all right. Similarly, you have another paragraph, you say enter password. And in the next line, we have another input. Type equals password. Okay. Now, if I go back to my login page, I should see something like this, right? So we see enter email, enter password, and then we see that we can type stuff over here. All right? Now, what we need is a subin button, right? So to do that, in the next line, we will create another input field with type equals subin. Now, if I go back and I refresh, I should see a certain button here, right? So now we have, you can enter email, uh, you can enter a password, and you can submit it. But if I click on the submit button, nothing is happening, right? So that's because we haven't added any functionality to the submit button. So to do that, what we will do is we go back to the HTML, and in this form, um, you can Essentially, type uh, action equals. Now, inside this, what we're going to do is we're going to create um, two curly brackets, right? And inside that, type in this URL underscore bar. Okay. Now, what this is going to do is we're going to specify that in this, we're going to send it to login. Right, so it's going to send it to the URL or login, and we're going to say method equals post. Okay, what this does, what this tells is we have to post this form information to this URL. Okay, then in our other pie within the login function, we're going to add another parameter. Over here called methods, and we're going to say um, post and get. So, get is what will happen when we visit the login URL uh, from the browser just now, but post is what will happen when you want to send some information to this URL, right? Which is what we are doing from this form field. Okay, so once we do that, what we can do is we can say if request. So what what we want to do before that is we just import request from class over here, and we say if request dot method is equal to get, then we just return the HTML that we just saw. If not, if not, we need to log in the user, right? So we can obtain the email from request dot form email. Okay. So um okay. So what we want to do is we want to obtain the email and password from the form field that we created. Just the code, right? So to do that, um, we have to specify that this field is an email field and this field is a password field. So to do that, what we can do is we can just go here and add name equals email here yeah, for the email field, and then we can add name equals password here. Yeah. All right. So we have email and then we have password. So we can obtain the email and password from request dot form and leave this from here. 
Okay. Now, what I will do is I'll just print um, email and password it here so that when we actually log in, we can just see how to do it. And just so that it doesn't throw any error, what I will go ahead and do is I'll just say return log. And then I'm going to see it's similar to this. Now, if I go ahead and run after five again. So now if I log in, right? Um, so okay, I'm just logging with anything there. Okay. Now if I click submit, what we see here is it actually prints out the email and password that I just entered, okay? From so it will receive the email and password from the form. Okay. So now how do we log a user? So we will log the user in if the email and password that we entered matches whatever is there in the user database. Right? So to do that, we need to read from the database and verify that um, the email and password that we entered is correct. Right? So I will go ahead and do that over here. So I'll click with um, SQLite three. Uh, so go ahead and import. So with SQLite dot connect to the database that we just created. As connection, let's say cursor is connection dot cursor. Right now, what we will do is cursor dot execute select um, username. So select ID comma username from users where email is equal to so um what we need to do is essentially select uh, a user from the database where email is equal to the email that they entered and password is equal to the password that they entered right so to go ahead and do that I will use an S string so we'll just type F before we start the string and what that will help you do is to add in um, variables to the string usually. so where email is equal to email And password equals to password. Okay. Now you will you will say user info is equal to cursor dot fetch one. All right, so what is, what this will do is we'll execute this statement and we'll fetch um, whatever information you want from the database, right? And since we say fetch one, it's only going to fetch one row. And by right, it should only be one row um, with this email, right? And in this password. Okay. So if we manage to get an object from the database, that means this email and password exist, right, in the um, database. But if we don't get uh, any, any information back to the database, that means that user and password does not exist, right? So we will check for it here. So we'll say if user info, uh, then, or maybe even we'll say if not user info, then you will go ahead and return the login template, right? But if we get the user info, then we will uh, essentially we will, we will go to the home page. Okay. So to do that, we're going to import two things. We're going to import redirect to redirect the home page, and we're going to import a function called do report. So this is the same function that we used in the login or HTML over there. So to go ahead and redirect to the home page, what we will do 
is you will say return redirect and inside the redirect function you will say you are a part and inside is you are a part or you will pass in home since we want it to be redirect to the home page okay so now if i run i got five again and if i refresh okay i can i if i go in and i um password for password which is what we created in the database right and now if i click submit it should be getting me to the home page okay but similarly if i type the wrong password and if i click submit it should just stay here okay so essentially we created the login feature um, has everyone managed to do this does anyone have any challenge is there anyone who managed to do this is it okay? Raise your hand if you have if you can log in if you manage to do it about okay you want to see two okay I'll just wait for two minutes so that everyone can look at this and make sure the code is working fine. Yes. Then you understand to get it working. Oh. Okay. Yes, you know.
Yeah. Is he mad? But are you going to assist with me about it? Do you try? No, then you can go. If you go with the labels. Oh, yeah. So this one should be. Thank 
It's still public. It's because it's the display of the So I, the mistake that you made is with, so the scripts should be kind of nice. So just so the scripts should be kind of nice. Okay, you can use that. Yeah, use that. Yeah, the middle right here. Run that command again, but capital S. Yes. Oh, it doesn't wait. No, because so you're not running the app. So you oh, should be if name equals main, oh, then the back up. Name it 
This is uh, not, but it's just making it. Yeah. Can you delete the list of money and then read on your website? I'm going to. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming it works for many people who are working out. So if now we enter the correct login information, it should redirect back to the homepage. Okay. Alright. Um since we are running out of time, we would reduce the scope of this project. So what you would do is you will just display the different objects on this homepage. Um, let's forget about adding to cart and removing from cart. Okay. So now to do that, once we're in the homepage, what we need to do is we need to display um, all the objects that we have in our stock uh like a stock table, right? So to do that, okay, let me go to the upper side. And what we're going to do is we're going to create another file called say home.html inside the templates folder. Okay. Now inside, so what I will do now is inside home.html, we are going to create an HTML tag and you will create a head tag and you will say, let's say, welcome home. All right, but we want this message to be more personalized. So we want to say welcome username, right? So to do that, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to um, add these double faces. And within this, we will say username. Okay. Now, once we've done this, we go to add a and inside uh, this home function, uh, what we will do is we will render render template and we will pass in home.html. All right. Now we saw that there is this username variable over here, right? But we want to pass it in. So okay. So to do that, what we will do is inside this render template function, you will just say username equals whatever you want to say. So for now I'm just going to type some stuff. But what you should be able to see now is if I refresh the page, I can see welcome home stuff, right? So to make it look a bit nicer, I'm just going to enclose this in a H1 tag. Uh, 
So now you see work from home, and then you can dynamically pass in a variable uh, into the test schema, right? So what we're going to do now is inside this login function, um, if so, in this over here, um, and we say you are a car. Uh, okay. So there's a few ways we can do this. Um, the simplest way is we have uh, like a global variable. Let's say username. Okay. I'm just going to declare it as an empty string. Now, over here, what we will do is we will say uh, username is equal to uh, user info. Okay, so what this will do is it will obtain username from here and then it will set it to this global variable. But since this is a global variable and we're accessing it inside a function, we need to specify that to the function. So we will just say Google and then we will say username. Okay. And inside the home function, instead of um, passing this, we will just pass in username. Okay. Now I'll go ahead and run this other time. Okay. So now if I go to log in. Oh. Log in, and then if I enter my email and password, and if I submit, it should say "Welcome home" and my username. Okay, yeah. this is working for everyone. Yeah. I will show the HTML again. And I will show after I again. Now, in this page, we want to display the objects, right? The objects that we store in stocks to the base. So, to do that, what we will do is we will retrieve whatever objects we have in stock to the base over here, and we will pass it in as a variable to this HTML file. Okay. Now, to do that, we will again connect to the database. Uh, same syntax over here, so I'll just copy this line over. And I'll say person is connection dot person. And then I'll say person dot execute. So you will select then what will it do? So the fields name description means you are the one So we will select name description non in stock and image URL from stocks. Okay, then you will store it as stocks equal to cursor dot fetch all. So it's going to fetch all everything from the database. And then uh, what we will do is we will just pass in stocks over here. So we will, we will say stocks equals stocks. Okay, so we'll pause for me. So Okay. 
can I proceed? Yes. So in Homer HTML, um, you will create a body pack. And inside this body pack, you will create uh, so what we want to do is we want to loop through this list of stops and we want to display them one by one, right? So to do that, what we will do is we will write for loop. So to write a for loop in HTML in class, you will open the curly base, you will put a percentage sign. And then you say for. So let's essentially copy this line. Okay. And paste it over here. So for name, description, and stop, image URL in stops. And close the presentation sign. So then we will create a paragraph tag. Um, we will say name, double braces, and then we pass a name. Okay. Then similarly, you will add one for uh, okay. let's say you want to display the image now. So let's display an image in HTML. We have IMG tag and we have SRC equals to string double basis image URL and those double basis. Then you will display the description. So this is description. And now I'm going to stop there. So let's see. Uh, stop. Okay. Then we will end our part. So let's make sign end or and let's make sign again. Okay. So I'll pass for a moment. Has everyone managed to do this? So now if I go ahead and refresh, okay, I see name, apples, big image, and description, and number and stuff there. So to adjust the image size, we can do that in HTML as well. So inside this image type, we will pass in height. Let's say is uh, 400 pixels and width is 400. Now, if I refresh this, it should look like this. Can everyone see this on this screen?
Is it working for everyone? Anyone have any issues? So this was everyone. There is just one more thing we will do and we will end the workshop, which is we will make sure that people can log into the um, home page only if they have actually logged in. Right? So to do that, we will check if the username is set. Um, so or rather if the username is not set. Then we will redirect them to the login page. So we will say redirect URL for and login. And we will return this. All right. So now if I run as a end and if I refresh, I should go back to the login page, right? I shouldn't. I shouldn't be able to access this page unless I have logged in. And when I do log in, I can go ahead to this page. Okay. So that's all for the workshop. May I have?